BBOR Black Box Online Radio, coming to you from West Virginia. And hello everybody, welcome to the special Thursday episode of Black Box Online Radio. This is another edition of Ned's Journal, where I'm going to be talking to you about some of the future updates for the channel, as well as just getting an opportunity to touch base with you guys and the audience. As some of you know, I was planning on being in West Virginia for five weeks this year, and in just two or three days, I'm going to be getting on a plane and going back to Asia. These last four and a half weeks have gone by in the blink of an eye. It was so fast. However, it's been a great time to be here, a great time to reconnect with the family, as well as seeing familiar places before I go back. But it's also given me some opportunities to record things for the channel, as well as make some future plans for Black Box Online Radio. Now, as far as this channel goes, um, Zodiac Monday is going to stay in place, and there is a new episode that has been released for this week's Zodiac Monday, where I interviewed um, Melissa Rose Tappa and Thornton Daniel Jeffrey talking about their Zodiac suspect, L.D. Hill, and there were a lot of colorful comments that came in in the section down below, but we should remember that almost everybody should get a chance to voice their Zodiac Killer theory, as well as presenting their suspect or person of interest. And I am just going to keep going with that, as well as more book discussions, as well as different ways of um, connecting with um, the material, because the show is Zodiac Monday, and for the longest time I've done it as the Zodiac Killer News Report, and then I did some interviews, and I want all of that to be available, because it doesn't have to be limited to a single type of content. I mean, it started out as talking about suspect profiles and then talking about possible Zodiac-related crimes, and I think that there's going to be more of a blend of different type of, of of different types of content that is going to be coming out for Zodiac Monday, as opposed to just the interviews or just the Zodiac Killer news reports. So there's a lot to uh, check out if you're curious about the Zodiac Killer mystery. Every Monday you can tune in, and I released an episode for Ripper Wednesday that was called The Murder of Francis Coles, talking about a possible crime that could be connected to Jack the Ripper. And for a long time, I put Ripper Wednesday on hiatus, but now it is up and running. I have so many episodes planned out for Ripper Wednesday, and the reason why is I'm genuinely curious and fascinated by that mystery, and I am always trying to remind myself that it is a very dark and sinister story, Real people were murdered, but there is that element of human curiosity, and you can do both. You can do both in the true crime world. You can have a certain amount of respect for the victims as well as being curious to the point of you just have this desire to know who was the killer. And with Jack the Ripper, it's going to be a much more difficult case to solve than perhaps any of the true crime cases that I've mentioned on this channel because so much time has gone by, the physical evidence is no longer in existence. A lot of it has been destroyed. Not to mention that absolutely everybody who was connected to the Ripper case firsthand, such as the original investigators, the families of the victims, they have all passed away. But there's a lot to look out for on Ripper Wednesday. Every Wednesday there's, there will be a segment about Jack the Ripper for the foreseeable future. And for the Friday segment, I'm going to be releasing an episode tomorrow, actually, and it's going to be a direct response to the documentary Suburban Nightmare about the Menendez brothers. And this is one that I've wanted to talk about for a while. And I have two previous episodes about the same series, Suburban Nightmare. They have three uh, documentaries that have been released on Tubi. One of them is about Jean Benet Ramsey, and one of them is about Chris Watts and the murder of his family. And I have just wanted to complete the trifecta. I wanted to just complete the final segment. And for the Friday show, it is still the Anything Goes Friday, but I'm thinking about launching it into a series on D.B. Cooper. And there are a couple reasons for this, because it's kind of some odd timing. Last year on the channel, I was doing Ripper Wednesday, and I have been planning for months to start the Jack the Ripper report and I did, and the, the problem was, at the same time, I became immensely curious about D.B. Cooper in that particular case, and a lot of you guys have connected with me about D.B. Cooper, made some requests, and I've had some back and forth, but I would really like to start from the ground up and do a multi-part 
series or set of discussions about D.B. Cooper for the Friday show, and it's one that uh, most of the Black Box online radio audience is familiar with, as well as just um, one that people are very curious about, like me. So I think that we could have some very good discussions in the comments section down below. And if you want to follow along with all of these episodes, you can hit the like button and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. And you can also go through some of the links in the description box. One of them is for buymeacoffee.com, buymeacoffee.com slash blackboxnid88. And that allows you to make a donation or a contribution to help support the show. And anybody who makes a donation will get a shout out on Zodiac Monday. This weekend, there will be a new episode of one of the audiobooks coming out. There will be the debut of White Horse Strong, the third story in the White Horse Killer saga. And I have noticed that the White Horse Killer stories just had a little bit more energy than some of the other stories that I've talked about. For example, in my second book, Down the Dark Lane, there are three sets of fiction, and I just had a little bit more I don't know, passion or enthusiasm when I was writing the third story about the White Horse Killer saga. And I think a lot of people have that effect on them when they're looking at certain true crime cases like the Zodiac Killer, Jack the Ripper, D.B. Cooper. And we aren't 100% sure why, but people are just a little bit more curious about these cases than they are about other cases. And yes, the White Horse Killer saga was molded on the Zodiac Killer, but specifically the Zodiac-Manson connection. And that was the idea I had once, why doesn't somebody try and write this down as a novel? And the third story will be White Horse Strong coming out in audiobook format as a YouTube exclusive this weekend, so please feel free to check that out if you're curious. And for a while, I was just thinking, this is going to be my life's work. This is what it's going to be. I was thinking about going all out for the White Horse Killer saga. Like, the way there's a book out there called Zodiac Killer, Just the Facts, the one that was made by Tom Voigt, where he put out the assembly and creation of the police reports in type format and organized. I was thinking about making something similar for the White Horse Killer saga, where it would be, you know, like, it's fiction, right? So, typed up police reports and ciphers and clues and interviews and presenting it as a more entertainment style mystery because it's fiction it's um purely designed for entertainment yes it is based on certain elements of the zodiac killer but i thought about making a companion book and i have kind of put that idea not on the back burner but more like the back burner of the universe and i'm thinking about just continuing with the stories because that's the world that i know a lot of people have asked me if I was going to write a true crime book in the future, and the honest answer is, I write fiction, and, you know, it just hits me like a bolt of lightning sometimes. Oh, I think I was actually in the car driving here in West Virginia a couple of days ago, and the idea for the next story in the White Horse Killer saga, I was like, oh my gosh, you know, like my foot's kind of just tapping the accelerator, tapping the gas, and I was just thinking oh my gosh, I got the idea for the story right now. Should I just pull over on the side of the road and, you know, start making some notes or something like that? But ultimately, I think that it's um, it's just uh, something that'll be, it'll take some time. I haven't written a single word for the fourth installment of the White Horse Killer saga, but it is a story that I want to keep going with and keep exploring. And if anyone wants to follow along, you can check out the audiobook for White Horse Strong coming out this weekend. Now, as far as some other things go with the channel, some people have been asking things about how and why I present the material in the way that I do. Like one person asked me this question via email. Anybody can write the show at blackboxonlineradio at AOL.com. And what they said was, why is it that it sounds like sometimes you are hyped up on Mountain Dew and other times it sounds like you just smoked a blunt? And one thing that I think people don't quite understand is, or they don't quite um, get to see, rather, maybe they understand it, but they don't get to see, is all of the outtakes that happen for Black Box Online Radio. And, I mean, I mostly air Zodiac Monday unedited. If I've truly misstated something, then I will pause and, you know, put a space for editing. But mostly when I record, like, a 45-minute episode, it's unedited, and if I'm unsatisfied with, like, the first two minutes, then I stop, I scrap it, and I start over. So you don't get to see the outtakes, and sometimes maybe I've tried, like, two or three or four times, and sometimes 
14, 15, or 16 times I've tried to start the show, and then I just stop and, like, go back to the drawing board, start over, BBOR, Black Box Online Radio, coming to you from West Virginia, and begin again. There was a recent Zodiac Killer news report that came out, and maybe some of you can even tell by the way my voice sounds. I spent about one hour trying to get it right, and I knew exactly what I wanted to say. I knew exactly how I wanted to say it. I didn't I really couldn't put my finger on it why the words weren't coming out because I've talked about this a lot in some previous episodes. The reason why I make content as frequently as I do is I spend all day doing mental organization. With a show like Zodiac Monday, it's all week. I just think about, all right, I'm going to begin the show this way, then I'm going to say this, and then I'm going to say that, and then I'm going to go into this next uh, subject. So even though those shows are mostly unscripted, there's a lot of planning and structure that happen in them. And I think that um, they've been coming out fairly well, and I'm not going to lie to you guys, I definitely like doing the Zodiac Killer news reports. I definitely like doing the book discussions. I definitely like exploring different material, different leads and sources in the Zodiac killer mystery and that's the type of content that i would like to uh keep putting out for you guys the news reports and the book discussions from time to time interviews will pop up if the opportunity arises but i have done a lot of interviews for this channel i have a true crime playlist and a zodiac killer playlist and you can uh, check out some of the content if you haven't heard all of those things yet on the one hand i felt so proud of the true crime playlist that i started creating in november of 2023 there were so many times when I would just sit back and I would look at that and I would begin to think, wow, you know, this is the best thing that I've ever done for the channel. When I interviewed um, Cloyd Steiger and Richard Jones and Miriam Davis and B.D. Salerno and all of these true crime writers and people whom I've had I've wanted to talk to for a very long time, people who have written books that I have wanted to discuss for a very long time and i was you know really looking forward to that and i said on the one hand i thought that was the best thing that i've ever done for the channel on the other hand i was also somewhat disappointed with the end results because it's all on my part the guests didn't do anything wrong they're accomplished writers and thinkers and they have lots of ideas about the true crime world but for me the audio wasn't perfect on some of the skype interviews that i recorded and also i found that i wasn't necessarily getting the results that i wanted for that interview series you know i thought it would be would have been much bigger and i think that part of the reason why is because there are just a lot of other true crime channels out there that are bigger than mine, and I'm always kind of wondering what is the antidote going to be. I'm in that place where I want to make content the way that I want to make it, but at the same time, I'm kind of always just wondering, well, why isn't the channel getting any bigger? I mean, maybe if I just um, did everything according to some other type of manual, it would be different, but I'm at the point where I still don't want to give up making the episode the way that I want to, or in discussing the stories in a way that I want to. And I think that the whole reason why people listen to Zodiac Monday and Ripper Wednesday is they want to hear a different take on the subject. If they wanted to listen to somebody else's take on the subjects, then they would just go over to their channels. And this show has always been about the running monologue. It's always been about the ideas expressed in the podcast, as opposed to flashy graphics and bells and whistles and firstly i don't even know how to do any of that stuff secondarily that's never been the type of program that i wanted to create where there's just a bunch of noise and not a lot of substance i wanted to always have people go along with the running monologue the discussion the ideas that are there and if you disagree with something put your disagreements in the comments section down below and as the channel gets bigger though i have noticed that there's a lot more confrontation, there's a lot more criticism, there are a lot more insults in the comments section, and I'm just really not a fan of that. And one person I ultimately had to ban from the channel for doing things that um, were somewhat questionable. In the past, maybe I wouldn't have banned somebody for that, but they were just going through every single comment thread on Zodiac Monday and just insulting people, just saying, no, that's a dumb idea, it's a silly idea, and just 
going through every single thing. And I, that person had even been warned about how it's all right to disagree with people, but you don't have to insult them. And ultimately, that person was banned because I don't want to create that type of environment on YouTube. And sometimes I watch people's channels that attract a lot of negative feedback. And one of them even had like somebody in the comments section saying, wow, every time I watch a video from so-and-so's channel, it's only filled with negative comments. I don't want that. I mean, I wouldn't want to be in a comment section where there are only people complaining about things, and I don't want anything like that on a true crime channel where you're dealing with real stories from real people, and real people were murdered. So I am just hoping that people can express themselves and disagree in a humane and respectful and civil way, and I think that that's a very simple and easy thing to do, because if you don't agree with somebody's Zodiac Killer Theory or Jack the Ripper Theory, why don't you just put it in the comments section down below? Well, I don't agree with this theory because, and that's all you have to do. This stuff is just mind-boggling to me about why you would ever want to start some type of insult-laced argument about a true crime case. I mean, Maybe some other subjects. I get why people would have that type of sensitivity, but with a true crime case, it's about getting the truth right. Right. So as far as um, the uh, direction of Black Box Online Radio, other people have asked uh, different types of questions about some of the behind-the-scenes things. And one of them was, why did I choose to wear the clothes that I was wearing in two of the banners for the show that were um, – they were said to be by Stuart McAdam. He contacted a – graphic artist, but they were provided to me by Stuart. He's been a previous guest on this program, and I've been a guest on Stuart's show. I would recommend checking out his channel if you're curious about internet marketing, and he has a lot of good ideas. There are two interviews with me over there. One of them's a Zodiac Killer interview. Stuart is also a close follower of the D.B. Cooper case, and that's what we were discussing here on Black Box Online Radio. But as far as why I chose to wear those types of uh, clothes for the banners and that have been used in a couple of thumbnails. I mean, firstly, those are my real clothes. Nobody asked me to dress like that. But the reason why I had on that exact outfit was on the Zodiac Killer channel, they were planning on launching a segment called True Crime News. And I was actually even wearing like a black blazer jacket, the way that a newscaster would dress up. And again, those are all my real clothes. And I do dress like that in my normal life when I'm not on the air, and and I think you can get the idea. But I was trying to do that segment on the Zodiac Killer channel, and they wanted to expand beyond the Zodiac Killer mystery and talk about other types of true crime cases. And I was just given like five different true crime stories. And they're like, we want you to respond to these the same way you do on Black Box Online Radio. Just talk like openly and freely. And I'm like, I got this. I talk about true crime cases all day, every day. All right, let's go. And I found that I couldn't do it. Again, tried like five times, ten times, and it wasn't something that I was going to get right. And I just messaged, I can't do this. I can't do this. And I'm just thinking, what's wrong with me? I've run, I run a channel that's unscripted. I do this all the time. And I really had to have the self-realization that on Black Box Online Radio, I don't just talk to you guys about true crime cases. I don't just sit down and say, these are my ideas about this case and that case. This is what I think about this case and that case. Instead, I tell the story of how I encountered the material. And I mean, all of this is uh, figured out in retrospect because, I mean, I always begin by saying, okay, well, I was watching this documentary and then they mentioned something about this other true crime case. Then I decided to learn more about that true crime case and here's what I learned. And when I was doing that true crime news segment on the Zodiac Killer channel, which is no longer up, by the way, they more or less just um, provided me with the content because it was in the news. And also, I was trying to say it like a newscaster without any of the ums and like and, um, and pauses, so to speak, so to have the completely perfect intonation and pronunciation and all of the word spacing, as well as talking about things that I wasn't familiar with. Just taking a brief glance at the material, like what would the real introduction be? Well, this stuff was provided to me because it's in the news, so I'm going to talk about it now. And you couldn't say anything like that, and I wouldn't want to say anything like that. And I was just like, 
I can't do this. And they're like, all right, so we're just going to come up with some pre-written scripts that you can read off. And I did. I did that. You know, I just read off some scripted content. And ultimately, that segment was taken down because the Zodiac Killer channel has explored some other things. For a while, they did a series on paranormal videos. And um, I even talked to them once about doing a tie-in series where we would begin by talking about either the Golden State Killer, the Manson Family, the Black Dahlia Avenger, maybe even the Escape from Alcatraz, and then bring it back to the Zodiac Killer and say, now, because this is the Zodiac Killer, Let's look at how the Golden State Killer is also a suspect in the Zodiac Killer mystery. Let's look at how the Black Dahlia Avenger is also a suspect in the Zodiac Killer mystery. And um, the Golden State Killer was Joseph D'Angelo. He is the suspect of Anne Penn, who has written two books about him being the Zodiac Killer. Steve O'Dell, of course, thinks that the Black Dahlia Avenger and the Zodiac were the same person. David Gold thinks that the Zodiac Killers, plural, escaped from Alcatraz, Frank Morris and the Anglin Brothers. There is a enough material to do definitely 25 or 26 episodes about some type of tie-in series. And I kid thee not. I really don't because there's a D.B. Cooper connection, the Phantom Killer connection in Tex Arcana. There's so many different ways to tie the Zodiac Killer to other true crime cases, and it's not made up or anything. Other people have these types of theories that are out there. Or to be more precise, the Zodiac Killer channel wouldn't be the people who are making it up. These are all things that have been printed and published, and it would just be about responding to them. Now, that was my idea, and that one didn't take place either, but the Zodiac Killer channel puts out content only from time to time. Two of the new Interview with the Experts uh, episodes came out within the last six months, one with Druzer and one with myself, but also featuring Richard Grinnell of ZodiacCiphers.com. And it's been nice to work with them, and it's been nice to um, do that interview series, and I mean, I can't really say anything bad about it, so I'm just very fortunate to have these opportunities. But as of now, I encourage you to check out Zodiac Monday, Ripper Wednesday, and uh, feel free to watch the episode about the Menendez Brothers that's coming out for the Anything Goes Friday segment, and please look out for something in the near future when I do a multi-part series on D.B. Cooper for the Friday episodes, and the audiobooks will come out on the weekend. All right, that's all for me now. Anybody can write the show at blackboxonlineradio at AOL.com. You can also get me on Facebook. My personal Facebook is in the description box, and blackboxnet88 on Instagram. And almost every day I release reels on Facebook and Instagram, and they come out on YouTube in the YouTube Shorts page. So uh, feel free to check those out. The final thing to say about those behind the scenes is all of those are pre-scripted, and... Another thing that I've had the opportunity to explore in the last 12 months is around this time, last year, I was talking to you guys about the YouTube shorts, and I was just saying, I can't do this. This isn't me. I mean, to take a true crime story and condense it down to 60 seconds, that's just not the way that I talk. I am an open-ended, rambling, external monologue kind of person. But I didn't want to accept that. I just couldn't accept that I couldn't do something, that I can't do this. And if I had practiced enough with that Zodiac Killer true crime news thing, I would have been able to do it if they gave me like seven or eight days to practice, but they needed the episode done in one night. So there wasn't enough time. And with the YouTube shorts, it wasn't enough time. And I really just began to think, I want to get better at this. And there are some particular reasons for that. And... Firstly, there was a channel out there called Playing With Fire. There still is, actually. And I really like one of the models that they put forward for running a bigger YouTube channel. We're talking about a much larger audience than mine. And 21 uploads in one week. Seven episodes that are like 5 to 20 minutes. Seven live streams and seven shorts. And it's meant to be short-form content, medium-form content, and long-form content. And I've always wanted to do that. Playing With Fire doesn't even upload that frequently anymore. I think that's something from the past. But I've always wanted to use that model. And even if it's five days a week and not seven days a week, I think that there's something brilliant about that because it's offering content to all different types of audiences. Short-form, medium-form, and long-form. And that might be something that will be explored either on Black Box Online Radio or on my other channel, Astro Psych 400. But with the shorts, I found that it was so difficult to mentally organize something and condense it down into one minute, providing 
the facts of the case, commentary and analysis and opinions all within 60 seconds and doing it in an unscripted way. And if you go back and listen to my early shorts from 2023, you're just going to hear, okay, and then this happened and then, and then that happened. And I'm just talking like some type of discombobulated robot. But I decided to start scripting all of them. I sat down with the computer and I started writing out the scripts for all the shorts. And then I also decided to pay more attention to the edits and how I was making transitions. And believe it or not, I'm sure some of you can believe it. I now love making that type of content. I love just sitting down and doing all these technical things that I didn't even know how to do when I started Black Box Online Radio. And I think that there's um, just something remarkable about that. And I want to see more about where this is going to go because I found that the shorts are really catching fire on some days. It's weird. Like, I think that maybe one short will just catch on and – Maybe a thousand people will watch it, maybe two thousand, and then there'll be another short that I think is of equal quality and ten people will watch it. The shorts algorithm is completely different. And as I said, they're also shared on Facebook and Instagram, but YouTube audience is usually the biggest. Feel free to check some of those out. And I know I said that I was going to conclude the episode and then I ranted for like six minutes or something like that, but that's what a journal segment is about. Talking to you guys, sharing some things. This is what's going on behind the scenes, and ultimately, thank you so much for listening to this, and thank you so much for checking out my channel and following along with everything. You guys are absolutely amazing. The channel wouldn't exist without you guys in the audience, so thanks once again, and you guys know where to find all the stuff, and that'll be all for me now. Until next time.